Now we will look at some questions, some problems. I will give you some data for a particular projectile at an angle. And each time I will ask a question and I will go through the solution. And when I finish the solution, I suggest you hit pause and actually try the same question again. Yes, the same question, because it's in rehearsal. It's in explaining it, uh, working it through, that the understanding comes. So at the end of every question, you redo the same question following the steps I did to make sure you understand it. And by the time we finish, you will have all the skills you need to do projectile motion at an angle. Here's the data. An object is thrown into the air with a velocity of 20 meters per second at an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. Always draw a diagram. You have the velocity, you have an angle. Usually that's what you were given. And we can find Vx and Vy. Now in fact, your first step is find the components. Now this is pretty easy. We've done this many times. 20 meters per second, 30 degrees. Vx is equal to uh, V, which is 20, times the cosine of theta, cosine of 30. And I work that through my calculator, and I find 17.3 meters per second. And the vertical component, very simply, we've done this many times, 20 times the sine of 30, and that's equal to 10.0. Uh, I'm just going to write down 10 uh, meters per second. Now you should hit pause and calculate this for yourself. The first question is, how long did it take to reach the maximum height? To find the maximum height, we use the vertical component. That's what's carrying it upwards. The formula that seems to work best here is A is VF minus VI over T. We have uh, the acceleration, we have VF, and we have VI, and we're using only the vertical component. In the vertical direction, VF is zero. We rearrange the equation, and time, which is what we want to find out, is equal to negative VI minus VI over the acceleration, which is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Remember, when we throw something upwards, it's minus 9.8 always. Therefore, the initial velocity is minus 10 divided by minus 9.8. And we find that the time equals, work it out, 1.02 seconds. Now, you should try this yourself. What was the total time for the trajectory? Well, one of the things you need to memorize is that the time up equals the time down, even if it's a projectile launched at an angle. And the time up was 1.2 seconds, therefore the time down, 1.02 seconds. And therefore I take 2 times 1.02 and I get the total time in flight, 2.04 seconds. But we don't have to do it this way. Let's suppose you didn't know the time up. And the first question you had was, what is the total time in flight? Well, we would use the same formula. A is VF minus VI over T. Now, this is something you really should memorize and make sure you rework this through yourself. Now, I'll rearrange the equation. And I, have, I want to find the total time in flight t is equal to vf minus vi, and remember we're only using vertical components. It's the up and down that's independent of the sideways one. And so here's what I'm going to write. Notice the acceleration is minus. The final velocity will be minus 10. Why is that? Well, if the initial velocity in the upward direction is plus 10, when it comes back down, it will be, in that vertical direction, minus 10. So the final velocity, minus 10, minus vi, which is positive 10, I have minus 10, minus 10. And so divided by negative 9.8, let's see what we get. And we get minus 20, notice, 
divided by a negative 9.8, and I get the same answer, 2.04 seconds. Now, try this yourself.